All right, let's see how many patron requested words and sentences I can get into one video. Quite a lot of you haven't claimed these rewards. Feel free, I am your puppet. Do your thing with me. <laughs> All right, let's do another one of these things. Worst intro music ever. Easily. I mean, there have been some doozies, but that is the shittest by a mile. Of all the possible combinations of notes and rhythmic sequences you could have used, you went with that. I think that's as close as metaphysically possible to technically not music. It's just an arpeggiator set to a flat 120. A mouse could play that just by dying on the keyboard. You know, I'll set it to 240. That's actually a thing. If you play it that fast, it's called Gabba. And nobody likes it, <laughs> except people who are currently on nitrous oxide. I'm pretty sure Gabba's a joke genre, and it took off because it's such a good joke. <laughs> it's a viral marketing phenomenon, but like, from the digital Stone Age <laughs> equivalent. Uh, it's see, most popular Western music is in the time signature 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, four, and it repeats the pattern every four beats. One, two, three, four. A waltz is in three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, la, di, da. And four, eight, four, eight is basically four, four, but twice as fast. So you're very, very, very rare. I don't it's hard to even pitch it. It's very rare. And Gabba is characterized in the unconventional time signature of, I think, one, eight, which is... Just, there's no room for syncopation at all. You have to repeat the first beat on every beat, which is, yeah, it's necessarily maddening. And what you've done is in one four, one, one four is the, is the romantic subgenre of Gab. <laughs> all right, listen to this. All right, all I used was the one sample you gave me and it, it took me like 10 minutes. It's what the Swedish call Vankelmodic. It is fluctuating. And what you have done, Mr. Curie Mu Curie Curie Music One. What? Your, your channel name is Curie Music One. Music is literally your middle name. <laughs> and that is what you used as your intro music. An obsolete experimental form of Easy listening Gabba Garage. It's like it's like calling yourself Kuru Hairdresser One, and your intro is you stabbing a child's head with some scissors over and over again and nothing else. It, it's like it's like calling yourself Kuru Architect One, and and your intro is just a picture of a piece of dry rotted plasterboard in the middle of a quarry. It's like calling yourself Kuru Banana Cream Pie One. And your intro is just a repeated vine clip of you shitting a banana. Actually, it's more like you are the banana cream pie, isn't it? <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready for... <laughs> Tell me, how is modern feminism important to men too? Yo, two things before I get started here. So, I'm well aware that I'm a male. Just shut up. Crikey. That is a bold strategy. I never thought of that before. Just shut up, I'm a man, eh? <laughs> I think I like you. Just roll with it, okay? This is important. I, uh, best of luck to you, Mr. Music. I suppose it's Mr. One. <laughs> I hope this approach, this approach works for you at some point. <laughs> but I can sense from the frustration in your voice and your body language that it so far hasn't worked. You sound like someone who has already been shut out of countless conversations for being a man. I'm well aware that I'm a male. I'm a male. I'm a male. Just shut up. Shut up. Just roll with it. Okay, this is important. It is like banging your head on a wall, isn't it? Trying to talk to feminists while in possession of a penis. It's like banging the wall on your fucking head. Eventually. Somehow. 
Yeah, that does actually explain your theme tune there. <laughs> you might be a lot smarter than I thought. And the second thing is, is that we need to define feminism formally here. <laughs> While you were saying define feminism with your voice, you were displaying the text define shit. I, do you know what you did there? You defined feminism. To define feminism. To define feminism. To define feminism. I mean, there's a possibility that you're a secret genius here, but yeah, I'm 95% I'm sure you're just a butt munch. Feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political and economic equality to men. Okay, two things. No, no, seriously, two points. Um, firstly, you missed social from the, from the definition, which is a, a small point, uh, unless you specifically consider yourself a political economy justice warrior. <laughs> which, funnily enough, very few feminists do. Social is very much their thing. It's almost as though they stick to what they know and where they already have the most power. But you... Mr. One didn't just forget to say it. It looks very suspiciously like you deliberately cut it out. Watch the clip again, folks. I didn't, I didn't cut this up. You can tell from the background music. On the grounds of political and economic equality to men. I don't know if the ominousness of said background music is bringing out the conspiracy theorist in me, but it's almost as though you're a master criminal using subtle cryptic clues to his true identity. <laughs> Are you just here to make feminists look daft? And do you even know you're doing it? <laughs> or are you a sleeper cell that went off early? Shut up, just roll with it. <laughs> yeah, alright. And the, the second point, I'm guessing that, like most feminists, the authority to which you are deferring is the dictionary. In your case, Webster's. At least it sounds like that's you know, where you got the general wording. Let's have a look at the infallible passage in question. <clears throat> You'll notice it's in two separate parts. Now, funnily enough, I do identify as part one because part one is also a definition of gender egalitarianism. The theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. And I believe that. And I also identify as part two because part two is also a definition of women's rights activism organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. And I have indeed participated in that. What I don't do is that little trick that you just did. You squish them together there. In, in your interpretation, feminism is women's rights advocacy on the grounds of gender egalitarianism. You're saying feminism, at least your feminism, is the position that definition two is necessary because definition one is true. Yes, am I following you? Yeah, and, and that works for me. Yeah, I'm not a feminist because I don't hold that position. All right? The position that number two is necessary because number one is true. I think number two is necessary, number one is true, but I don't see a causal relationship in that direction. It, if anything, I see it in the other direction. <laughs> a theory of equality is necessary because there's so much activism for women's interests out there. <laughs> But you do see the cause in that direction, and that's fine. I mean, nowhere in the dictionary does it instruct you to interpret it like that, but that's fine. That you know, The question is, are you going to be consistent? I mean, I'm going to try. I'm consistently not going to identify with words just because of some causality I've drawn up between its definitions. Are you going to take the rules you apply to the word feminism and follow those same rules in your examination of each word presented in this lexicon? Are you going to approach this with the consistency, dare I say, the equality by which you hold so dear? Okie dokie. Let's have an explore of Webster's Dictionary. Now, remember what we're doing. Number two is necessary because number one is true. So I, I can just look over here at the top here at 1B. Communism is... A system in which goods are owned in common and are available to all as needed. Well, that sounds delightful. I mean, who wouldn't want a world where everyone has what they need? Yes, definitely true. Strongly agree. <laughs> oh, really, comrade? Well, 
Guess what's necessary to achieve that? <laughs> That's right. If you think people deserve what they need, then you're one of us. And you agree that definition two here is necessary. And what does that mean? It means we have to put women in charge just because they're women. On the grounds that men have never had to work for anything. Actually, let's just tidy up this whole tangled mess, shall we? There we go. <laughs> that actually makes sense now, doesn't it? Two is necessary because one is true. I, with any luck, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the dictionaries of the future are going to say. Drink it in. This is it. This is win state right here. When your country's dictionary finally clears up this little clerical error. Keyword is equality. Women's equality. <laughs> the keyword is equality. Pigs equality. <laughs> and you will know who the pigs are in your society. For they are the people you're not allowed to call pigs. It's completely normal to call men pigs. I mean, they just are, aren't they? Whereas it's harassment and abuse to call women pigs. And some people really hate being called pigs. That is not your fucking formal definition of feminism. Just leave. X out of the video. Thank you for clicking. Just get the leave. Good call. <laughs> All the other conscientious objectors and I will flee the country. I wish you best of luck building a society with that attitude. But I have to wonder what happens when you've taken over everything and there was there is nowhere to go. There's nowhere left to leave to. You know, when get the fuck out is no longer an option, what will you say instead? It's either get off the planet or die, isn't it? And governments tend to find it rather expensive to get people off the planet and remarkably cheap to kill people. So, yeah, I don't think I like you anymore, person you appear to be. I'm going to leave my colleague in charge. He could disagree with you without being banished, because he's a turtle from another from the other side of time. Huh? Yes, hello. Before I go, <clears throat> for those of you looking to hold more irresponsible lunatics accountable with laughter and proper education, Victor Zen needs help with his Koalamos Awards project reboot, found in the low bar below. He's going all uh, production value, all shiny and shit. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I might get around to that one day. Once I've stopped wasting my fortune on wine, women, and amateur dramatics. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back shortly. Hey, reason number one that feminism is really important to men, I am floating away here. That was beautiful. Do you know why it was beautiful? Because if it's true, it's trivial. And if it's false, it's earth shattering. It's either a deepity or the opposite of a deepity. I can never remember. Modern feminism holds male and female emotions to the same degree of value. Yes, it's called a femtometer. And measuring everything in femtometers is probably a stupid idea. Meaning it would help eradicate the whole um, stigma around men feeling sensitive emotions and not being able to express them without seem seeming like a weenie or being demasculated or whatever the fuck you feel like calling them. When they respond to your videos. I mean, what are you calling me right now, sucker? Modern feminism also holds male physique and female physique to the same respect. How does it feel about turtles? Is that still a legitimate phobia? Wow, I'm talking a lot of this going on. Yay! In general, feminism destroys the hypermasculinity complex. And if you think about that, it's like a strange form of self-oppression. Okay, I'm starting to skip sections now, but I swear to God, he published that sentence in that order by himself. Feminism destroys the hypermasculinity complex. And if you think about that, it's like a strange form of self-oppression. I fucking love this guy. It's like I'm staring at him through a picket fence. It's mostly darkness, but with slivers of broken clocks telling the right time. It's like if you want to knit a sweater or bake a batch of cookies, do that shit. Be happy. I'm afraid the social services in my area doesn't accept cookies and sweaters as child support payments. They only take wages. 
generally money. Uh, you can crochet all the cookies you like, but if you want to be a daddy, you don't get to be a daddy. You get to pay money to the government. So it, it's not the men don't like cookies and sweaters. It's just that they don't have anyone to make them for. The family courts don't take very kindly to fathers these days. They find them hyper-masculine. Next reason, yo. I'm like the nice guy. And even I think you're a douche. I'm gonna need some help. There's a lot of guys out there, like young males, that honestly just don't feel that way. They just don't feel that feel the need to constantly have to objectify women. Yes, that's correct. It's extremely rare for humans to constantly objectify each other, unless they have a severely broken brain. And if you can look at a man and assume his brain is broken just because he likes tits, then you might be the one with the broken brain there. But what is very common indeed in our society is for men to view women as goddesses who need to be protected, and for women to view men as demons who must protect them. Do you think feminism is doing a good job of fixing this? Or might they be shitting a profound pile of nothing but making it worse? And deface their integrity and how they value people all in the, in the name of this hypermasculinity. Fuck's sake, mate. No one has ever done anything in the name of hypermasculinity except feminists. Hypermasculinity only exists in the feminist realm. It is the feminist term for masculinity. Because they don't like masculinity. They find any amount of it at all to be hyper. And that gets them very angry about it in theory and very aroused about it in practice. There's a needlessly complicated and counterproductive dynamic and it fucks the system up for everyone. I mean everyone, mate. Either your head or your life. Or both. What's the fuck going on? It's like he's doing it on purpose. I know, but I'm pretty sure he's not. This is for real, real. The car is on fire, and there is no driver. Another good point, and the most important one, I think, is that it, sh it helps shed light on men who have been sexually assaulted. The word you are looking for is raked. And this is a feminist's idea of shedding light on it. By not calling it rape. For the most part, it's unheard of. Yes. I mean, if a teenage boy is making out with a teenage girl and he moves to the next base without permission, he is now considered a rapist. But if a middle-aged woman fucks an unconscious teenage boy and then holds him liable for child support, that is not rape. And it's certainly not government-assisted financial rape to boot. As a matter of fact, it's not even sexual assault. It's called, he should have kept his dick in his pants. And once again, Mr. Wan, it is not the brain damaged objectifying meathead men in your imagination who say that kind of thing to other men, it is people like you. Namely feminists, who will cast their man's life into the fuck you bin because he should have kept his dick in his pants. While simultaneously believing that it would be misogynistic to deny a woman an abortion on the grounds that she should have kept her snatch in her hatch. Yes, it's feminists who say shit like that about men while believing the opposite for women. It's feminists and it's men and women who are just... Do you know, for sad eyes sake, I think I can just get away with calling it hyper-feminine, right? The problem is all these hyper-feminine people. Can I say that? Is hyperfemininity a problem, or is calling hyperfemininity a problem a problem? Either way, you run through this maze, you're gonna hit a wall called not equality. Once again, when men feel a certain way about something, most times it's considered not not masculine, not masculine, not so masculine. You're obviously a very confused young man. Let me lay it out for you in slightly clearer terms. When it comes to breeding, women select men to be responsible and protective. And when it comes to traditionalist culture, women select 
men to be responsible and protected. Then feminists come along and shame men for being responsible and productive without removing the existing burden to still be responsible and productive. When you put it all together, it's the process of manipulating men by making them feel good and then not letting them feel good. It's the carrot and the stick situation, except every time the man takes the nibble of the carrot, you beat him to within an inch of his life. It's best described as psychological torture, and it's such a deeply scarring and horrendous form of torture that it can only be performed by people who think they're doing the right thing. It's, it is the most dangerous mind virus this species has ever encountered, Mr. Worm. That's why I do this. If you're a human... Yeah, and what if you're not? You're gonna feel a certain way about certain stuff, regardless of what your gender is. There's no reason to differentiate. Then why the fuck are you a feminist? What you're capable of, or what you're allowed to show or express around other people based on your gender. Right, well that was just a sentence, Frank, but I get what you're saying. You could be any kind of gender expression you like, as long as it's not hyper-masculinity. Any other gendery kind of thing is just fine, but don't let us catch you being hypermasculine. Or we'll socially engineer you until you're fixed. I mean, you are identity politicians for the anti-masculinity party. You are authoritarians with no self-awareness. You are exactly what authoritarians with no self-awareness sound like. And I would rather not have to deal with you, to be honest. As much entertainment as I get for you, I would prefer a world where there's, where there's enough balance that I can get back to talking about stupid shit. But you keep popping up like whack-a-moles trying to fuck up the planet. And honestly, as a satirist, I'm extremely lucky to have a speciality that is not diminished by this tyranny, but in a way, in a way enhanced by it. There are countless innocent people and businesses who are indeed diminished, but in no way enhanced. That's why I do this. I'm lucky enough to be able to defend myself in a world of people who cannot. And you know what? I am using my privilege to help others. That's why you don't like me. Because I'm helping the others. Why do I look so fucking... red? Because uh, you're a racist? I don't fucking know. Look, look I know you, you're a very small channel with a very shit video, but fuck it, I... You were in the right place at the right time, and I just felt like having another go at yet another iteration of the same tired, cancerous arguments. I like coming up with new ways to approach old bullshit that people keep saying, even though they know it's wrong and they already apologised for it. Oh, right, here you go. These religious people, yeah? Aren't they idiots? Yeah? <laughs> they're, you know, they're dangerous drones who can't think straight, right? Them religious people. And when they disagree with you, they just call you an infidel. Like, if they don't have an argument, they'll just say, you're an infidel. Like, that's an insult. Yeah, it's fucking stupid, isn't it? <laughs> oh, by the way, the infidel's are just as bad. If you look closely... I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to look at all. I'm just going to say it, and you're going to take my word for it. But if you look closely and do my job for me, you'll see the infidels are just as bad as the religious people. They say all the same shit as the religious people, they do all the same shit as the religious people, and they're always mocking religion. Oh, and everyone in the Manosphere is an infidel. Well, everyone in the Manosphere who I don't like is an infidel, because I just call them that. But those religious people are fucking stupid, because they call you an infidel when they don't like you. Oh, needless to say, I'm not an infidel. <laughs> no, no, not me. And I'm not a religious person either. <laughs> I'm a skeptic! It took me a while to understand that... Although it isn't always the case, feminist is very often just used as a euphemism for misandrist. And though it isn't always the case, Skeptic is very often just used as a euphemism 
For I'm smarter than everyone. Behold my mighty throne of horseshoes. <laughs> you know what? Merry Christmas, everyone. There, I said it. <laughs> Sometimes the magic zombie Jew is the least ridiculous thing out there. Happy zombie Jew resurrection, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye and fuck right into heaven.